Hey everybody, welcome back to another rainy day in Tokyo and another devlog of Sharks, my little Python game development project that I started about a month ago. And I said that I will do some business travel and I don't know when I'll upload the next video. But I wanted to give you guys a quick update before I leave Japan, so here we go. Not too much has changed in the main menu and the game itself also hasn't changed too much. I did a little bit more polishing, but I actually did a quite a bit more cleanup in the background. So I worked on the tile code a bit to make it much easier to determine which tiles are where and how different entities interact with the tiles, especially the boat, of course. And <laughs> I worked a bit on a new model <laughs> because, yep, yeah, I finally replaced one of the arrows, at least, uh, which is the merchant. And this is, in case you couldn't tell, an alpaca. And the reason for that is because my partner is just really in love with alpacas. So I tried to make her smile a bit and implement some alpacas. And you know what? It actually gave me a bunch of new ideas for the game. So we'll see. We'll see what we can do with that. Another thing I was trying to implement, you might have seen it a second ago, is a bit of a hitbox. So I was trying to figure out how to not just clip through trees anymore. And I'm not quite happy with this implementation yet. There's still some issues with it. So I have to figure out a better way to do this. And that also made me think about how to deal with the player in general. Right now it rotates completely as if it would have been seen from bird's eye view. However, the trees don't really fit this bird's eye view. And the alternative is to have something like this, where we have a sprite that turns around according to where your mouse moves, but will always be seen more or less from the front. So this is my little alpaca character here. And it can still attack with the spear, but of course this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And I have to figure out which way I want to take from here, but I'm kind of happy with how the little sprite turned out. Another problem is that looking up and looking down is completely the same right now, so I do have to to work a bit more on this. But let's look a bit at my game board here. So gameplay wise, I think we've been a bit behind because we were focusing on most of the visuals right now. So that's why I was working on the hitboxes because I think this will be important down the road. And another thing that I wanna play around with is a camera controller that actually follows the, the player a bit more. So we don't always have this bird's eye view of the whole island. That might be kind of fun seeing a bit of a close up of the island. Okay, so I had a bit of a look at how cameras are treated in a lot of different games and I narrowed it down to our render queue function here. So this is what I have to work on. I'm going to turn this into its own little camera class and the key step is instead of rendering all these objects directly into the window, we're gonna render them on an independent surface and then we can move the surface relative to the game window. All right, so let me get started on this. I broke it and again, I fixed it and I confined the render queue function now into the camera class. And on top of that, I split the render queue from a new overlay queue. So the camera class now has a render queue and overlay queue. And the difference is that the overlay queue will not be dependent on the camera movement. It will always appear at the same position in the window, while the render queue will actually depend on the camera movement, which I have not implemented yet. Okay, I worked a bit more on this and now I update the camera position by using the player position. And then we apply this camera X offset to the surface that all the render queue has been rendered on. And this is what we end up with. Our camera moves with the player. And of course we have to figure out how to deal with the play field now because now the edge of the window is no longer the edge of the play field. Oh, another thing is I added little eyes for the alpaca. So now you can actually see which way it is looking. Uh-oh. So I finished implementing an area width independent of the window width and height. And right now they are set at the same number. So if we play it, 
we can see everything is as it was before. This runs currently at a frame rate of around 35 frames per second and it's not the 60 I wanted but you know 35 is still fine. But let's have a look at what happens if I make this world as large or at least just a little large and not even as large as I want it to be eventually. Let's say 1080p and this mess is what happens. Oh, it's becoming stuttery. Can you believe it? I mean, one thing of course is to only render the tiles that are in the field of view, but I have the feeling that that might not even be enough long-term. So, yep, there's definitely a lot to learn from me. <laughs> just came back from the nice Sensuji festival in Tokyo which was quite fun the first time it happened in three or four years even so that was an experience I was looking forward to ever since coming to Japan but now back home I think I need to start tackling this frame rate problem which is a huge bummer I did not expect to encounter this this early in in the game development phase to be honest I still have so many features I want to add and now having to think every single time oh is it worth the penalty in the frame rate is a bit of a letdown but I should see the opportunity in this and that is that I can learn how to make my code more efficient hopefully okay so the first thing I tried to do is to not draw every single tile of the background tiles now that we have a bigger area we only need the tiles that are actually visible in the window so we have this check camera function here now which returns the tile bounds that have to be drawn and I can feed those into the draw function and then we restrict our loops to these tile bounds all right let's have a look at the effect and this is what we work with now we have Frame rate again of about 25, which is a bit of a boost compared to the 14, 15 we had before. But now what I noticed is that the trees might actually be a culprit. So now we have 23 frames. Let's reset the map. This one, for example, only has four trees and immediately we jump up to 36 frames. So my nice procedurally generated trees might actually be the culprit. And as you can see, there's quite a few rectangles that have to be drawn. Okay, another little drop in the bucket. We have tons of trees here and we're running at around 23 frames a second. And now the trees aren't gonna be rendered anymore when they leave the screen. And that gets us up to 38. But the problem is, we don't only want to have high frame rates when we are away from the trees, we do want to have it in the trees as well. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I noticed in the code actually, that every single branch is its own polygon. And then on top, of course, you have every single leaf block that is its own leaf that gets drawn every single frame. So instead, I'm gonna draw all the branches on one surface and only save the surface in the same for the leaves. And let's see how much of an improvement this gives us. Okay, time to catch a plane. I'll see you on the other side. So while I was obviously quite busy on the trip, I did find a half an hour here and there where I could do a bit more work on the optimizations I was talking about earlier. So now we have all the branches in the tree on a single surface and we have 
the leaves distributed on three surfaces per tree. And this still allows me to have them move slightly independently with the wind and give the illusion of them being independent leaves. We're back finally it was a long trip but it was quite fun anyways we are running out of time in this episode once more and we still did not get to do any gameplay features which makes me a bit sad but that makes me promise you that next episode will be focusing on gameplay i don't know when the next episode will be but it will be more gameplay centered okay there's one last idea i have to improve the frame rate and if that doesn't get us all the way up to 60, then I am afraid I'll have to ask you if you have any ideas or suggestions for improvement. So one thing I want to do is at least all the land tiles are static. So I should be able to plot all the land tiles on a surface and only update that surface whenever something changes. In our case, whenever a shark interacts with a land tile. The water tile, since they are animated, I do have to update every frame for now. I might have to change that at a later point, but at least the land tiles we can simplify a bit more. I just added this little if clause here. If the height is over the threshold, meaning if the tile is a land tile, we just skip the rest of the loop. Just to have a quick idea if this will help our frame rate. Of course, it won't render the land tiles right now, but as you can see on the left, we do hit 60 frames again, finally. All right, next up, getting the land tiles back working. Whew. There was a little earthquake just now. Well, one of the pleasures, quote unquote, that you get for living in Japan. Anyways, actually this went quite a bit smoother than I expected. So I just added this surface land variable that is a Pygame surface of the whole area width and height. And during the tile creation, I directly draw the rectangles of the tiles onto this surface. And then in the draw function, I just have to append the surface land variable to our render queue. And then we keep the same if clause here that skips all the tiles that are above the land threshold. And all our land tiles are back in the game now. Unfortunately, we still don't quite reach 60 frames per second. Although it is definitely quite an improvement compared to the beginning of this episode. Okay, it is what it is. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode nonetheless. And I obviously hope that I'll see you again in the next one where we can finally make some more progress on gameplay. Until then, thanks for watching.